Hey, uh, welcome. It's been a while, but I uh, I have my version 2.0 setup of my ham radio and my Jeep. So I'm not sure if I showed it with a hardtop on. I think I might have. I can't remember now if I did or not. I think I meant to, but then something might have happened to the video. When I had the whole, I, I did a video on the cheapest install with a Bofang. And what I did is I wired the antenna. It's a, uh, I believe that's a, yeah it's a diamond um i had it on with my soft top and I, then when i put my soft top on for the winter i had to find some metal uh ground plane obviously and i took the first and second bolt on the right side and put uh i wanted to put a piece of sheet metal but i wasn't able to get it and i ended up using one of those uh God, wait, t squares and use the uh just temporary because this is obviously coming off uh actually this is march sixth seventh now so uh this will be coming off in a month so <clears throat> next for next year i gotta i want a more custom plate for that and i might even put my antenna outside that'll be my next upgrade so um <clears throat> so this is my jeep with my hard top on and i have the same setup for my antenna that i had with the soft top except that you know obviously i put it on with the hard top and it's got a ground plane the reason i did it is because the jeep hard top isn't metal so i'm getting really decent um um qso's on it um i'm able to hit all the local repeaters fine i can even hit some far away ones but they're a little staticky but it's only a 19 inch antenna so that's about the only gain i get out of it it's, it's local stuff so i'm not sure again if i if i'd put that out or not but if i didn't that's that's what i did with my hard top and then it'll go back to its spring summer configuration very soon what this is really about is my new upgrade so as you see my clip is still there for my whole bullfang setup the mic is still in the mic holder, but it's a little different mic. And you see here, that's my ID 5100. Um, it's actually a 5100A, but it doesn't matter. And I used a Pro Clip, which you can look up online. Um, Pro Clip is, uh, I had only had a couple options to hook this up, and that seemed to be the most, um, I'm, I'm very big on not changing a lot of things in, in the vehicle of whatever I'm trying to do. So, um, what you see here is you see the header for my 5100. I know there's a little dust on it because the sun's hitting it. And my pro clip is centered right on top of the radio. Um, you can't probably notice it a lot, but I'm probably going to drop this. Um, I'm going to drop this. I take the header off. It's magnetic. And uh, I, I put a glue thing on there. And it holds it really nice. It's been on there for about a month, over a month now. I'm, I probably am going to drop it right to the bottom of the pro clip. Just so I could drop it down another quarter inch. Um, I won't be, there we go. Okay. So I'm not going to do anything with the cable yet until I have it right where I want it. But it goes along the windshield. You can't see it. You can see it right there on the corner there near the speaker. And then it goes down. Um, so I didn't put it in there. So like I said, you see the wire going down a little bit. <clears throat> a little bit of ice still on the ground, sorry. And yeah, my whole driveway. And this is the only ice that's left right near the vehicles. Okay, so again, you see it coming down the door a little bit. I did take out the kickout plate for the passenger, so you can, that's why you don't see anything there. It's in back of all of that. Um, there's a little piece there. I gotta move that. Oh, maybe I don't know what that is. Maybe insulation. Um, the you see a little wire I bundled there. I'm gonna tuck that in better later. Uh, what I did. Let's see if I can do this. <laughs> yep, there it is. The radio is right underneath the passenger seat. I got Velcro on it, doesn't move. I've had it, I've had the radio here longer than it's been operational just to see if it would move. Hasn't moved even more than a centimeter. Uh, and I'm pretty anal about that stuff. So it hasn't moved and this is elevated. So I'm not really too concerned about wet stuff getting in, but you never know, I'm hoping it won't. Um, what also what I did is I put a, um, an extender cable on the mic. So the mic actually wraps, I have an ethernet cable, cat six internet ethernet cable going around here, around the back and then along the passenger underneath so that I can pull the cord all the way up, you know, at least three, four feet from the holder and talk on it comfortably. So I kept the same holder I had before. And I like this setup too, because it's not in the way of anything. The parking brake works great, uh, no issues. Um, and uh, there's nothing else hanging anywhere in the Jeep, uh, which I like, I like things tucked away. Um, I am going to get the bar that goes across here and put that, I'm going to put a link in up here. I am going to do that. I really like that setup. Uh, I am going to do that. But, um, right now I want it, I want it to be as, uh, hidden as possible. 
just because that's that's what I do. That's my preference. Um, my next upgrade for this is going to be with the antenna. I'm going to go ahead and get that antenna and put it on the back wheel and get that extra rack mount with the two holes in it. And I'm going to put that in. That'll be probably toward the end of summer. We'll see how that goes. So um, let's see how this thing operates. I'm going to wait till uh, this evening. I have a net that I jump on. And let's see how the radio works in the Jeep. So uh, I'll be right back. Okay, now I'm going to show you that it's working. Uh, uh. Okay, so I'm in my Jeep. And in order for to get power, I have it actually wired to my aux, which is down there near the shifter. You can see the 2018 and above. Well, actually... I don't know if they come. I know the 220, 2020 and above come with them already installed and they have wires down below and on the battery. And I wired them into the battery underneath there. I wired it to the ground as well. Remove the foot plate. Hold on. Okay. So um, in order for this to radio to work, the way I got it wired, I got to, the actual engine either has to be on or at least on the run position. Um, <laughs> Should probably turn it off. Okay, so I have to turn the aux. I have it to, I wired to aux one, so aux one is on. Uh, the ID fifty one hundred will actually go to the last state when it gets power. So if there was power, like if I turn the ignition off, it'll and I turn the aux port back on again, it'll just come on and off every time. Um, since I turned it off manually when I last time I did this, I have to actually hit the power button. So let me reach for that. Maybe. <laughs> hold on. Let me hold it a few seconds. There we go. <laughs> so, um, it is working. And, okay, right now it's on a couple channels. Uh, I'm going to put it on the home. I'm not here to talk about how the ID5100 works, just that it works here. So, I'm going to put that on the repeater that's local here that I'm going to be talking to in a second. And I, I always usually have this one on... Uh, that repeater there that's there are two that are really close to me one's uh uhf one's vhf saddleback is actually the one that's right down the road and it's kind of the one i i actually belong to that club that repeater club so you know it's kind of the, my home repeater uh any moment now you should actually hear the sunday night net kicking on and yeah, just for me to demonstrate that the thing that this thing actually works uh pascal's video um i do remember his name afterwards uh pascal's video who i uh, did the 2018 jeep and, and the one i was trying to emulate uh, when i get my other radio i might, might put my antennas on the back um really good video i'll link it in here uh, when i get this posted um he's the one who actually inspired me to kind of do this and commit to doing it and it worked out pretty well i'm happy with it um so uh, shout out to him for making a really good video. He makes a lot of other good videos too. I'm subscribed to him. Um, hang on now. What time is it? What time is it? Uh, one more minute. Okay. And if you know the ID5100, I can actually... Let's go ahead and make this the main one. I can actually make this just one band. There we go. So now it's just going to listen to that repeater so I won't get interrupted on the other one. Uh, this radio is really cool because it it's dual band and dual... I guess you'd call it dual receive at the same whatever you call it synchronous receive or whatever so it actually has two receivers in it or two yeah two receivers one transmitter i believe is what it comes down to and uh so it'll actually if you, it has two speakers on it so it'll actually receive both at the same time which can get irritating <laughs> if you have if you're if you're listening to it um but when i'm on the net or talking to somebody i do put it on single that way there's no uh no interruptions so i have uh I have this up for military time, 19.30, which is uh, 7.30, uh, local time. Calling all radio amateurs, calling all radio amateurs. This is Kilo Charlie 1, Kilo Hotel Mike, KC1, KHF Ed. I'm in Dover, New Hampshire, and I will be your net control tonight for the Sunday night. That was sponsored by the Saddleback Repeater Association. We meet every Sunday night at 7 p.m. The net is open to all radio amateurs. We especially welcome new amateurs, visitors, travelers in our area. You're just passing through. Please you can hear the speaker down below in the passenger seat. Our primary purpose. I'm at about uh, two thirds volume. When I'm running, it seems to come in okay. Um, 
Seems to work fine. I think with the top with the top down, it'll get a little noisier. But I'm actually thinking of putting the speaker feed into there, which I did with the Bofang, and it worked pretty well. Okay. Let me see if they hear me. I'm mobile, so I'll go ahead and say I'm mobile. K1, SFC, Kilo 1, Sierra, Foxtrot, Charlie, Steve, out of Deerfield. Uh, that's actually K1, SFC, mobile. My fault. <laughs> hmm. Somebody else check one so you can see I can I can pull whoop, there we go I can pull up the cord pretty good up to the roof almost to the roof of the Jeep so there's no real issue with uh, you know this going anywhere so so it seems to work okay I'm just going to see if they can hear me or not if they can hear me I'll go ahead and stop the tape and, or the video rather sorry I'm old but the, the so it uh, seems to work pretty well and I like the location of it and where it sits and uh, I can see in the daytime it'll be interesting to see if I can see it when the tops down but we'll have to wait a couple about a month for that yeah, that's not that's not my fault that's the guy calling in so I'm hitting the repeater just fine a lot of people on the net that's good I might trim this a little bit. Okay, who else is there? Roger that net control. This is K1 SFC. This is uh, Steve. Uh, Steve out of Deerfield. Okay, Steve, since you're uh, mobile, why don't you just go ahead and uh, share your thoughts with us tonight? So, K1 SFC, Steve, go ahead. Hey, Roger that control. Yeah, this is Steve Deerfield. Uh, I've been off the uh, net for a while. Um, I won't get long, long story. Just you know, a lot of working, a lot of hours, and a lot of things going on, and had some trouble with my station, both in my vehicle and at my base station. So um, yeah, I actually got my ID fifty one hundred finally in my new Jeep. I say new Jeep because the Jeep's last few years are really difficult to put a radio in if you've ever seen one and I'm very proud of myself that I was able to get it mounted and I got it running and I even made a video on it so uh, I was so proud of it because it was it was you know just not easy to do not like the old Jeeps the old Jeeps you just throw the thing in and bolt it down uh, the new ones are a real uh, real uh, headache so uh, I'm talking to you now I've had it in a few days now uh, hoping you all can hear me pretty good and uh, I'm just really glad it's in and really hoping to enjoy uh, having the radio in the vehicle again. So that's pretty much been, besides work, that's been pretty much what I've been dealing with uh, this week. Playing around with the radio in the Jeep and uh, working. So uh, just want to say hi to everybody. It's been a while and uh, glad to be back on the net. This is K1 SFC. Uh, back to net control. All right, I'm going to cut the video because you you all know what a net how a net runs. You don't need to hear that. Uh, like I said, I'm just really glad uh, this works out. And uh, running right off my aux switch. I just hit aux. And I got power to my radio. Radio underneath the seat. Wired on the side over there underneath the panel. Working pretty good. So thanks for watching. And uh, this is Steve's um, ham radio Jeep 2.0. <laughs> 
right. Have a good, uh, have a good day. 73, everybody.